So now talking about uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 23. It says, there is no sorcery and divinity against Jacob or Israel. That's what it says. Now there is a huge wave, you know, that is on the lives of the people where they speak about a lot of negative things which is happening to them. For example, you know, uh, occult or black magic. I've heard your testimony wherein you say like there was some kind of things which were troubling you. Yes. And now, how do you see the hand of God in the midst of all this? It was troubling me. It was in the past because you are right. There is no occultism, there is no divination, there is no black magic against Jacob or Israel provided you belong to Abraham. True. So Abraham is the father of faith. What is your faith? Do you have faith in the Son of God? Mm -hmm. Do you have faith in Jehovah? Mm -hmm. Do you have faith in uh, the church? Do you have faith in Mother Mary? That she was a mother of God and she was endowed with so much of love and care towards her children by the Holy Spirit. If you say, I'm a Christian and yet you don't believe in all these things, mm -hmm. it then you are not there in that promise anymore. I didn't know who Abraham was, neither did I know who Christ was in all his power and glory. And so it wouldn't be applicable to me. Mm -hmm. So you are with the true God. You are in the light. Darkness will not have anything to do with you. Mm. You are not in the light. You are outside the light. And then you ask, why that promise is not working on me? It will not work on you because you're just not in the light. Mm. So I was not protected when I was in the other faith. Mm. And this had a huge detrimental effect on me that I tried to commit suicide five times. Mm. And the lady who had done this to me, you know, I want God to bless her today. I really want God to bless her today because she doesn't have the knowledge of the amount of evil it did to me. Right. So if she is blessed, mm. she will know Christ and she will repent and she will be saved. Praise God. Mm. So she did this because she wanted to get married to my husband and she was related mm -hmm. to my family. And uh, if I would have known before that this girl was interested in my husband, I just wouldn't have got married to my husband. Mm. I would have said, okay, you are so interested. Please get married to him. It's fine. You know, I don't want to spoil your dreams or something. She's a widow mm. and she's got a child. So none of us even knew she was encouraging such idea or thought in her mind. Mm. And sometimes I do feel sad for her, you know, that she had to uh, come to this to get what she wanted. Mm. So she did this to me in such a way that either I need to kill myself mm. or walk out of the marriage by myself. And I did both. I told my husband, I will die. I completely feel like dying because my marriage is a failure. And because my marriage is a failure, I want you to have a better wife. I'm not a good wife to you. So you please get married to whoever you want. And um, this was going on. This was really constant. Once I tried uh, taking 135 pills. And by the way, this was after my baptism, where I did not believe what the Bible said. Mm. I did not believe that there is something called divination. I did not believe there is something called sorcery. Mm. And I constantly questioned the faith. What is this? Why is this? What is this evil spirit? Oh, Fitz is given by evil spirit. Oh, what, what is it? What is exactly going on? I constantly questioned, but I did not try to find the answers for my questioning. Now we question a lot of things. Right. So what should we rightfully do? We need to figure out the answers prayerfully. Mm. That I did mm. not do. So I had to stop with my questions and live with my questions and not know the solution or the answer. So my faith was not according to the word of God or what the church is teaching us mm. today. So that was still affecting me. So God took me into a journey and made me see, experience all these things. So today I know there is evil in this world and we need to pray more.
Mm. We need to be more conscious in Christ. Mm. We need to be more righteous in Christ. We need to be more holier in Christ. Because only if we are in Christ, all these things are a possibility. True. Otherwise, mm. it's not a possibility. Mm. So when I knew all these things, then I started asking God, what should I do now? Then he brought into light another promise what he has given each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. It's the authority to drive evil spirits away. It is the authority over evil. Praise he God. has given mm. each and every one of us. Right. So until and unless you accept there is evil, you can't exercise the authority right. because you're mm. outside mm. the line of faith now. You're not on in the, in the same page with what Jesus is trying to teach you and me. So once I agreed there is evil, then he taught me the second thing. Now exercise your authority. Perfect. Mm. So mm. then we started exercising the authority. How do you exercise the authority? Not just taking the Bible and saying, oh, in Jesus' name. Are you good enough to do that? Is my question. Mm. Are you on the same page with the Holy Spirit? Mm. To be on the same page with the Holy Spirit, you need to be holy and you need to have your body or believe that your body is a temple of Holy Spirit and you mm. need to try to keep that temple clean. Just try, the rest God will take care of it. Try sincerely, right? And how do you try sincerely? Confession. I always say there was this famous movie where everybody kept saying, you know, oh, you have a 2C, 2C, 2C. So mm. we already have that wonderful 2C here, confession and communion. <laughs> we follow this 2C. Mm. You know, it is fantastic. Your life is set on the rock. Mm. So when you go to confession, you are already in the state of grace because your sins are forgiven. You are in the state of grace. And when you take communion, God mightily starts working in you. Mightily. And when he mightily starts working in you, what place does darkness have when light has already entered you? Beautiful. Praise mm. the Lord. Okay. So... That is how I got delivered. It is not chumma, mm. oh, in Jesus' name, get out. In Jesus' name, go running. In Jesus' name, <laughs> climb a tree. No, it didn't happen like that. Right, right. It happened when I started following the sacraments properly. It right. happened when I mm. asked God, what should I do? Mm. It happened when I told, I believe in your church. I submit to your church. I belong to your church. So mm -hmm. I will walk one with your church. That is when it happened. I'm sure that's what the word says. You know, he who endures to that end will be saved. And we, are, we have the grace to stay on, continue on. Amen. Now, the next question I would ask you is, you know, there's a scripture in the book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. It says, for it is not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Amen. Now, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, I'm sure, I mean, that's my favorite topic as well. Because he is the one who is, you know, the one who continues to do the work so powerfully. He's the one who's enabling amen, us. Because Jesus said he's the amen. helper, he's the counselor, he's the paraclete. Now, when you talk about the Holy Spirit, there is a specific place in your life, I'm sure, that the Holy Spirit has inspired you and talking to you and walking with you. How do you what, do you, what do you say about that? The Holy Spirit, I see him as a mother figure. Mm -hmm. I really see him as my own mother mm -hmm. who gave birth to me in Christ. Wow, that's nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see Holy Spirit as a mother because the Holy Spirit does everything we believe a mother would do and much more than that. I mean, I, I just have to agree to that because uh, the Word of God again says she was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, you know, when, when the Amen. angel spoke to her. No? And I think the motherhood of God was bestowed on Mary by the Holy Spirit. By the yeah. Holy Spirit. And what you have only you can give. Right. Because Holy Spirit has motherhood, Mm. It gave it to Mother Mary. True. Yeah. And I also sometimes think, is Mother Mary so loving because she's got the Holy Spirit in her? Mm -hmm. Could it be a possibility? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the answer would be yes. She's a holy spouse of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And what the husband is, the wife will be. What the wife is, the husband is going to be. Mm -hmm. Because it's a holy union. It's not a union of human being where two people can differ. It's a holy union. Mm. So I, uh, today I cannot think of Holy Spirit as just Holy Spirit. I think Holy Spirit is my mother. Mm. Because he prays for me when I don't know what to pray. Mm. He prays with such size. Mm. You know, he has this heavy size and pray for me, which I do for my son sometimes. And then I get tired. Mm. Half an hour I pray, I'm like, 
Uh, half an hour I was crying and now I'm having headache and oh my god I think I should need a chai and I go and make chai and drink and I just get distracted the Holy Spirit doesn't it stays with you and the Holy Spirit protects you always just like how a mother tries to protect a baby in her womb mm. the Holy Spirit loves you so much the Holy Spirit just oozes out love oh. mm. so much of love that only you can connect it humanly speaking with the mother Absolutely. mother's love is mm. the highest love so in every way when I think Holy Spirit I feel is my mother mm. and mm. I cannot survive with my mother I cannot survive without my mother today in this world mm. and mm. I need my mother with me always always so I call him in Tamil Thayumana Aviyanavare mm. mm. so mm. the Holy Spirit who is also my mother, mother. Beautiful. So that's how I relate. I, mean, I can relate that to Romans 5.5. It says, for the power of the Holy Spirit is poured out into our hearts. It says it's poured out in the form of love. Now, the next question is on the, the, the film industry. Okay. Now, I mean, I mean, that's the industry where I'm sure the Lord planted you and gave you the opportunity to be a star. I mean, it does, it's not easy with many people. You know, and they not try and, yeah, Even I've tried myself, it didn't happen. So... The Lord's hand was on your life, irrespective you knew him or you didn't know him. The word of God says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. So imagine an impact which is created for us, even in our ignorance. So I'm sure the Lord's hand was on you. Now, how do you share that experience throughout this uh, walk in the industry as well? I always think about this point which you just spoke of. You know, when I was uh, entering into my industry, the industry was a very, very uh, bad place according to the outside world. It is a place to be feared. Mm. It is a place to be kept away from and all those kind of things. Right, right. Mm. So when I entered into it, I always used to carry a book with me. Mm. My mom always comes with me and I don't talk to anybody. I just keep reading, reading. I would say God gave me the knowledge and the wisdom to keep away from the wrong people, A. And I would be called for discotheques, I would be called for various uh, film fraternity parties and uh, I would be called to, uh, I would be invited to taste a sip of beer mm -hmm. or a sip of alcohol or something and I always said no. I always said no and there was an inherent shy in mm -hmm. me <laughs> which mm -hmm. prevented me from going, there was like oh my god. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, what will people think? Is my nail okay? Is my eyebrow okay? Oh my God. So that shy and that consciousness, I firmly believe God gave me. Praise God. Because it grew much more than this. It grew to a level where I started thinking, is there a difference in me and them? Mm -hmm. You know, them as in the girls who went to discotheque or parties or had boyfriends in my industry, which was a very uh, in thing. You know, mm. in the 90s, in the mid 90s, it was right. a very in thing. You talk about your boyfriend, you say, oh, yesterday, you know, I'm very tired because yesterday I was in a discotheque. It was a very, very in thing. And I didn't have anything, absolutely anything to talk this way. Mm. And, uh, but I started seeing the difference, uh, how people treated them and people treating me. Right. Mm. So as soon as I went for a shooting spot, they would always give me a separate room in any house, any shooting spot, anywhere, because they know this girl doesn't talk to anybody, she keeps to herself. You know, this girl is fine, she talks to everybody, so she can be given this place. So I was uh, kept in a way that there was a marked difference. And because there was a marked difference, a lot of people kept away from me, which mm -hmm. was good. Mm. All these mm. problematic crowd always kept away from me, and so there was less gossips. And can you imagine once I had... Um, press meet mm -hmm. you know we give a press meet every year right you mm -hmm. know just to tell people that hey i'm there <laughs> i'm still acting i'm mm -hmm. still very active so i call the people literally about 10 at least 10 of them came and said you know there is uh, the other actors uh, press meet after half an hour one hour from this anyway we know there is no question to ask you you mm. don't drink, you don't party, you don't have boyfriends, you don't have any interesting stuff to share with us. Mm. So what am I going to ask, you know? There's nothing to ask. So you just let us know what are the movies you're doing. We'll write it down. We, we have to go catch up with the other star who's got much more interesting things going on in mm. his or her life. And I was 
I was just zapped at the way they put it across to me. Mm. And then I understood it was an indirect compliment. Right. Mm. Compliment to my mom and dad's upbringing. Beautiful. But now mm. I know God not only planted me in the cinema industry, before that he planted me into such a family mm -hmm. mm. who will not let me go astray. Praise God. He mm. chose, the Bible says he chooses right. your mother and father, right? He decides where you need to be born. And he's seen you even before you're formed in your mother's womb. Mm. And he decided everything. And a lot of people give compliment to my eyes. I know God decided I should have these eyes. Mm. You know, I am the only person in my family who has these eyes, which is from one of my grandfather. Mm. Mm. None of my other cousins have it. So I know God decided all these things. And whatever he's decided has been fantastic in my life. But everything is predestined. Predestined completely, including my husband. Mm. I wouldn't have got such a sweet husband without the Lord in my life. Praise God. So, praise All right, God. now, if you can share two best scriptures that you love, you know, it would be really nice. I will make you do more mighty miracles than me. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord is reinstating that He is your parent and He wants you to do much more, much more, much more better than Him. And mm. more, Father Valuran shared in one of his sermons, more does not have any ceiling. More can be anything more. And more can be how much ever more. You know, that word has got that speciality in it. Mm -hmm. So the Lord said, much more mightier miracles than me. More itself is good enough. But much he added more. much more. So this really, really touches me. And this is the scripture which touched me. And which made me realize he is our true creator. He wants to excel. Right. He wants you and me to excel much more than him, which no other God has said so far in this walk of the earth. So I like that. And I like, do not fear, mm. for I am your God. Do not fear, not because the enemies are weak. Do not fear, not because uh, you are in a safe place. Do not fear, not because you have a gun. Do not fear, not because you have got some, some brain, which of course God has given because he is God. That one reason is enough for all situations. And you don't have to fear anything. Awesome. That I, that I just love it. That I just love it. Now looking at your life, what I see is three areas. Three different kind of people. Three blessings. You know, you've, you've been with a film team. You've been with people of other faith. And you've also been with Catholics. I'm sure that God has made you an example in all these three areas. So if you could just speak to these three people who are watching this program. I mean, you can take it one by one. Probably there are a lot of believers, a lot of Catholics, a lot of people who love Jesus, who want to be a part of the film industry. And there are a lot of people from the other faith who want to know who this Jesus is. And it's like, you know, it's, it's out of the horse's mouth, you know, when you speak to them. Praise the Lord. And the other set of people is the Catholics who are gone cold, dormant. Now, can you speak to these three people in, you know, in your own words? What do you feel about it? Or uh, it, it's something like sharing your life with them. First thing I would warn people of the same faith but the other side about Catholics. We are a dormant volcano. <laughs> Nobody knows when we will erupt. And that eruption is going to be mighty, powerful, anointed eruption because Lord God is there with us. It is His church. He planted it. So He knows how to take care of it. Now coming back to a more lighter thing, um, my industry people, I would say you want more success. Mm -hmm. You want to decide the right films. You want to decide the right scenes, you directors. You want to have awards and accolades, you cameramen. You mm. want to be more creative, you dance directors or fight masters, come to Jesus. He is the creator. He decides your whatever you call fate and destiny. He is the author of your life. Mm. So you want something to be rewritten. You want something to be added. You want your bad stuff to be taken away. Come mm. to the author. Mm. Mm. He is the rightful person to do it. Because mm. I know I selected some wrong movies. Mm. I know I did not enjoy doing certain movies and it was a complete career uh, ruining mistake that right. I did mm. certain movies at certain point of time. If I would have known Christ, mm. I'm sure I wouldn't have got into those movies. Mm. 
So you want everything, you want success in your life, any profession you are, mm. come to Christ. And are you a Christian struggling in the industry because you are going straight and people want you to go crooked? Don't worry. Jesus is there. Jesus can reach you to the place which you cannot imagine. Wow. Mm. You know, in all your prayerfulness, in all your vision and everything, He will take you to such heights you cannot imagine because you are the child of God. Mm. All you have to do is stick with Jesus and tell Jesus, I will not do anything what you don't want me to do. If it is your will, take me there. Like that uh, beggar, like the leper mm. who asked him, if you want, Keep you me. heal me. Yeah. Oh my God, our Lord's heart melts if you pray that prayer. He will just come run and hug you, my child. Why wouldn't I want to give you success? Why wouldn't I want to heal you? Why wouldn't I want to give all these nice things you're asking for? I will give you. So all you have to do is pray. And the people of the other faith, I would very honestly start saying, you don't know what you're missing in your life. You just don't have any idea what you don't have in your life right now, which you need the most. It's like going to the moon without an oxygen tank. You know, it's it can be that detrimental not having Christ in your life today. And, you know, for uh, FYI, for your information, Jesus is not an alien God. He's there in Rig Veda, mm. Brahmaputran. He's there in Rig Veda. He's there in Quran. And even Buddhists somewhat believe Jesus Christ is a descent, descendant of Buddha. Mm. I don't... Sure. Uh, I've heard of that. Yeah, yes. yeah. Mm. So I don't know how they came to believe that. But mm. today the most amazing news is Jesus is not at all an alien. Absolutely. Mm. You have to just sit and talk. He's a living God. He, When I talk to you, you're talking to me. When right. you question me, I'm answering you. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. But I don't gain anything by you asking me. You don't gain anything by I talking to you. Mm. Since we are talking about Christ, this Makes conversation is good. Yeah. 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 So when you talk to Jesus, all you get is to gain. Mm. If you ask him questions, all you're going to have is solutions to your problems. Anybody can talk to him. He never said, only if you baptize, I'm going to talk to you. He never said that. He never said that at all. He mm. will always talk to you. He's always there close to you, close to your heart. So I would say, see, look at your life. And there is definitely a God-sized hole in it. Mm. Definitely. You're working very hard. Your incentives are low. Mm. You're supposed to get that promotion, but it goes to somebody else. Mm. You really love this person, but your marriage is fixed with somebody else. Mm. You really love this person and got married to him or her. There is no peace. Mm. All these things is because there is not sufficient grace. Right. Why do mm. I use the word sufficient? Because God is already there in whatever religion you're practicing. Jesus is already there in all the religions. Mm. But you haven't submitted or got to know him. Or you haven't said, you know what, Jesus, you take over my life and you lead me. Mm. Because of that, the grace is not sufficient enough to reach the 100% of everything in your life. Perfect. You just say that and... Mm. I will be amazed at your growth, I'm sure is what I would tell to my brothers and sisters in Christ who have not realized they are my brothers and sisters in Christ. Right. Okay, talking to our Catholics, what do you say about them? Catholics, I would say you don't know your worth, you have not realized your value, you have not realized how precious you are and you have not realized what authority you have over all the evil things in this world, everything in this world as a child of God. You don't know what you are taking in. You are taking a live electricity inside you when you take communion. Then why wouldn't you light up not only yourself, even others? Right. Mm. So Catholics, not even we can get the blessings from God. We can share that blessings with everybody at every walk of life, mm. at every faith. We can share our blessings with everybody. And the most beautiful thing is, the more you share, the more it grows. Right. Mm. And there is nothing God will not reveal to you, my brothers and sisters, I would say. Because God said, whatever is in the dark will be revealed in the daylight to you. 
I will set my eyes upon you and show the way you need to take. Why do you worry which career, which course in the college, which one to get married? Why do you even worry? God just ask, God, I'm ready. Can you set your eyes on me? That is all you have to do. When you take the communion, your entire genetics is changed. I really want people to sit down and think about it. You know how amazing it is. So all those genetic diseases I'm yapping about doesn't even affect me anymore. My father is highly diabetic. My grandfather is uh, paralytic. My mother has got high hypertension. Why do you bother? Your genetic has changed every time you take communion. Praise God. Your blood has changed. All your disorders which are coming from your blood will not affect you if you only realize mm -hmm. that your blood has changed every time you take the body and blood of Christ. And there are Catholics who come and ask me, Sister, they don't give blood, Sister. What is there in your cells? The body, when you receive, there are blood cells in it. There is body. So God has given this wonderful, wonderful treasure of heaven with a small key called faith. Awesome. So if you don't have that key, it is locked up. You have the key, everything is open to you. Every little and big thing is open to you, my brothers and sisters, I would say. And I would, I would further tell them, you know, there is no sin which is going to separate you from God. I wouldn't say this to anybody else so gallantly because we have that 2C. Right. Confession and communion. Confession is a wonderful thing. Once Satan went and told a saint, you know, I am scared of... Uh, no, I'm not scared of any place in the church. Altar, I'm not scared. I mean, not altar. I mean, the, uh, when people sit down for the mass, the pews, mm. I'm not scared. I can put them to sleep. I'm not scared of the, where the priests and the sisters live because I can go and, you know, change their mind and make them irritated with their superiors, make them be disobedient, make them feel sorry why they took over this consecrated life. And I'm not scared when the priests and the nuns meet their family. Even there I go, even there I do things, I make them gossip. I'm not scared. The dining hall, oh, of course I'm not scared. I make them think, oh, I want more. Oh, how about this dish, that dish, you know, all these places. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think so. the dining hall was not there, but I'm sure the devil is working even there. And he said, there is one place I cannot go because they immediately come under the grace of God, the confessional. Praise God. And why the confessional is not there with our brethren today? Mm. I always ask them the question, why don't you have the confessional? I want you to think about it. So is it, the, is it God who started your church or is it the devil who started your church? Because he's taken away all the important things. He's taken confession. There is no body and blood of Christ. Wait. The most powerful thing. So I would tell the Catholics, remember where you are. Praise you have God. seven books mm. extra. You give more tracts. You talk more Bible, you question more, and you answer everything. Praise I God. really would tell them this. So, now, this has been your life, when the Lord has been walking with you. I'm sure all the days of your life, the Word of God says, goodness and mercy shall follow me Praise all Lord. the days of Praise my life. Lord. Amen. So, we pray for you, that you would walk much more stronger with the Lord, Amen. because there are a lot of people who are looking at your life and learning Amen. from that. Amen. And we want you to pray for the, the audience who are watching this and for the entire team here right now. Lord God, we praise you and we thank you, my master. The living God, the living word, the only solution for all our problems today, the light amidst of darkness, the peace in the midst of all this confusion and tension, the only clarity is you, my master. Lord Jesus, you gave your blood for each and every one of us. Lord, I bring each and every brother and sister here in our sets. I bring each and every brother and sister who are watching this program unto your presence, O oh my Master. Cleanse each and every one of us in our families today with your holy precious blood. And cover each and every one of us in our families today with your holy precious blood, O oh Lord. We accept you as a Lord and Savior. We believe in you. We trust in you that you would only do good for us. Amen. You do not know what is evil. You do not know what is bad, my master. I am sorry for all our sins. I ask you, Lord, with your mighty victory,
victorious nailed right hand you would bless us today so that we would be blessing for many and in jesus name i ask you my master that all the bondages of the evil one will be broken in jesus name Amen. right as we pray now all the broken family will come will come under one god one roof they will be pasted together with unity and with your peace o oh lord my master in your knowledge with your holy precious blood that the evil one the satan cannot play any tricks on every one of us any more o oh lord my master we pray lord that you would open each and every doors and windows in our lives with your nailed hands which belongs to you lord and you would close each and every doors and windows of satan in our lives with your nailed hands oh my master we thank you for giving your mother as ours we thank you for giving these wonderful saints we thank you for giving consecrated children your priests and your nuns and your brothers oh my master we thank you lord and we pray you will keep them safe you will strengthen them you will give them your power and authority and work miracles among people lord and your true church will be blessed forever and ever and ever the world without an end in jesus name we pray all these things a wonderful loving abba father amen. amen in the name of the father son and of the holy spirit amen thanks a lot thank you so much praise, praise god. god and we going to pray for you thank you so much and see god's hand mightily on your life praise the lord thank you so much and ave maria praise god ave maria thank you so that's been a super episode you see how god picks people and picked daughters and sons of god i'm sure for the word of god says all things were made through him and without him was nothing made which was made jesus is in us and through us he is with us so let's continue to walk with the lord as we walk let's know that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path till we meet in another episode god bless you all